Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. Thank you for joining me here on the show. My name is Chris Spangle. You can learn more about the show at podcastingandplatforms.com. And today I want to talk a little bit about a metric of success. How will you judge if you're successful or not? This is an important question. This is something that you need to really think about before starting your podcast because there, as we talked about in the last episode, will be times that you're discouraged and they're not, that you're not quite sure if you should keep going. Is it worth the expense? Is it worth the time? Is it worth the headaches that sometimes come with building an audience? And you need to determine what is success. What does it look like for me? And there are many different metrics that you can use to judge your success. Uh, downloads are the main one. That is what everybody defaults to. How many people are listening? How many people am I reaching? And this is obviously an important one. It's, it's a good metric, but it can also kind of be a cruel mistress and a little bit misleading because if you expect to be Joe Rogan within the first six months of your podcasting career, you're going to end up getting yourself frustrated. So there are, according to podcastindustryinsights.com, uh, 2.3 million podcasts. And that might sound like a lot. And uh, that is up from 2 million at the beginning of the year. Um, Podcast Index counts over 4 million podcasts, which is quite the jump. But uh, the thing you have to remember, if you drill down into the numbers, you find that 75% of those podcasts haven't published in the last 90 days. So people run out very quickly. And I really think that there there are a couple reasons in my experience in, in talking with people and just kind of feeling it through on my own. And I think it's because people put the download numbers first and foremost in their journey. But what you, what you really have to remember is this is a long, hard slog. This is a grind. And that's why you really have to value your own enjoyment first and foremost as the main metric. Like I said in the last episode, I love researching and writing. I love talking about this stuff. I love talking about podcasting. I love talking about history. And I'm talking about things that interest me as opposed to turning it into a job. It certainly is a great second income. It's a great second job for me. Um, but And there are a lot of downloads across my different podcasts. But am I enjoying my experience? Am I enjoying that time? I have to. Because every time I sit behind this microphone and dedicate time to this, I'm saying no to Reagan and my stepdaughter, my fiance Reagan and, and stepdaughter, and I love spending time with them. And so it has to be worth it. And so uh, that enjoyment, it, am, am I getting something out of it personally? That time, am I learning? Am I growing in my craft? That's like my main metric of success. Now, that's not quantifiable. That's just sort of an internal feeling, right? Um, but let's talk about downloads. The first year of We Are Libertarians, we had 72 people listening at the end of it. I couldn't believe we had 72 people listening. Uh, it was not much. By the, uh, gosh, I think the end, of, but the beginning of the third year, we had around 2,500 people in episode listening. Now we are around 3,000, and there's, uh, well, that doesn't sound like a lot of growth, with, which, with a much different host that counts things a lot differently. Uh, IAB is the system that counts how downloads are measured and standardized across the board, and it lowered everybody's counts a lot. Um, but we we still uh, bring in nearly 30 – my show brings in about 30000 a month on the Chris Spangle Show, uh, downloads across the board. And the, the pat-down is well, – I'm not going to say what the pat-down is, but it's more <laughs> uh, every week – uh, and it's it's uh, fairly robust. Those are great metrics. But even if you're sitting at, let's say, a podcast with 50,000 downloads a week, you still will go, oh, these numbers are so crappy. You know, it, it's like the, this guy in radio, I, I saw him pull in once, you know, I was like 23. I was so broke. I was working part time at the radio station. It was like a Saturday you know, my life's going nowhere. I was I was just living in my mom's basement, um, dropped out of college. I'd been fired from a full-time job. I was working part-time for my dad as a janitor. Couldn't get a date. Like, I was, I was a loser by every metric. And this guy is very successful. Um, his name was AJ. Pulled in in a brand new Mercedes. 
uh, sports car. It was just the coolest car I'd ever seen. He did imaging. And and I was just talking to him. I'm like, yeah. He's like, so what are your plans in radio? And I thought, you know, I just don't know that I want to move around every three years to be tapping out at $30,000 a year at the end of my career 30 years later. And he's like, listen. It's not about the money. It can't be about the money because every time you make more money, you spend more money. And think about your own experience with money, right? Like those days when you're just like, oh, I need five more dollars to make it through this day or oh, I just need 20 more dollars. And then you get to a point in your life where you're like, I just need 500 more dollars to make it this month or I need a thousand more dollars to make this month. Uh, you know, there, that mindset of scarcity never goes away. And that applies to downloads, too. If you're at 50000 a week, it's never going to be enough. Uh, and you have to remember the median for podcasts. Most people, a really good number is 200 downloads an episode. So if you've reached 200 an episode within, let's say, your first couple years, you're, you're almost above average. You're like right at average. So most people are hitting 100 at the end of their first year, and then 200, and then 300, and then 1,000, and then... It just grows. The more consistent you are, the longer you do this, the more people that will listen to you and, and it will grow. The other thing is this is a very new technology. And so there are not a lot of people listening yet. You know, for instance, very few baby boomers listen to podcasting. They're the second largest generation after millennials. So they're starting to adopt and they believe that I think the number was 60% of baby boomers will have at least listened to one podcast in a couple years, two years from now. That's a whole new market of people to listen, the older generation getting into podcasts. So the number of people that are listening and consuming podcasts on a daily basis is still very low. So there is a lot of people that are going to come and move into this marketplace and raise everybody's floor. Okay, so there you have to realize this is a new technology. So if you look at your download numbers and it feels puny, you're like, Ugh. you know, I was talking to someone who is two to three hundred an episode. Like, I just don't know if I should book guests. Like, this just doesn't feel right. You know, there's not that many people listening, and these esteemed people are taking their time to come on my show. And I went to Chartable and looked at their charts. They've charted at number 96 in their category. And I'm like, you are so, you're doing so well in terms of your competition and where everybody is at, and they want to reach the engaged group of people that are listening. When I worked in radio, I worked at the lowest rated AM station in town called Abdul in the Morning on WXNT News Talk 1430, WXNT AM Indianapolis. And, you know, they would sell out every day on the morning show. And it was because the right people were listening. There may have been a thousand or two thousand people listening a morning, but it was the right thousand people in town. And so whenever a luxury brand came to town, they would buy with that morning show because they were talking to the right people, the right ears. And so let's say you have a knitting podcast and you land Gwyneth Paltrow to talk about her knitting and you're like, oh, I'm only talking to 47 people. Gwyneth Paltrow is better than my 47 people. No, Gwyneth Paltrow is going to talk to 47 highly engaged, highly targeted people that want to talk to your audience. They want to, they want to hear from her and she wants to talk to them because in the, in the, it, it, we all think like broadcasters still. We think like we need to get the biggest audience and have the biggest reach. That's not the landscape in 2021 in media anymore. It is about narrowing down to your interest. It is about narrowing down to your specific audience that wants to hear conversation about your topic that you're talking about. So keep this all into perspective when you're thinking about downloads as your main metric of success. Some people don't worry about the amount of people listening. They're using their podcast as a tool of personal influence in their network and in their space. So they po the podcast, for instance, especially in, in stand-up comedy world, became a powerful tool of building influence and audience. Uh, and that's why every uh, now every comedian has a podcast because – Again, it didn't matter if they were talking to tens of thousands of people. If they were talking to hundreds of people, it was more likely that they would sell tickets to a, a person that was a big fan that had built a personal relationship with them through their podcast and would then be more likely to bring some friends along who then become fans of the podcast, right? 
And so it becomes a, a way to build influence. Or let's say you're in a business vertical and you become, uh, I saw a podcast about small business taxes. How many people are going to listen to a podcast about small business tax relief? Well, I'm one of them, and I may be one of hundreds of listeners, but that particular podcast reached my specific I, – I work with a guy named Sean Grady on the Environmental Transformation Podcast, and you wouldn't think that uh, environmental concerns and cleanups – yes, big topic, but in terms of the the marketplace that he is working with, he has become a big influencer in this very small space. So it's a great way to stand out and start getting your booked, yourself booked as a speaker, getting yourself booked as an as a person of influence, I won't say an influencer uh, because of the connotations, but as a person that has authority and and also you're building connections. You know, I remember I, I don't do a lot of interviews on my show. Um, my friend Mark Clare at another libertarian podcast does a lot of interviews and we were walking around the libertarian party convention and I didn't really know that many people and he knew everybody. And it's because he had had conversations with those people. And podcasts are a great way to get yourself in front of people that you'd love to talk to. It's really hard for you to call up somebody in your space that is a, a, a high value target, let's say, and book an hour of, of lunch. Let's say you're doing a local podcast and you want to call up the mayor and say, or, or the, the richest person in town and say, I want an hour with you. Can we have lunch? I don't know. What for? Right. But if you do an interview with them, they're more than usually more than willing to talk about themselves for an hour. And so it's a lot easier for you to book them and get that hour of building a personal relationship and rapport with them. So that can be a measure of success, expanding your personal network and building influence in your space. And then for some people, it's income. This is the hardest metric of success. It takes a long time and a good amount of listeners. By my calculations, I'm sure there's some scientific number, but by my calculations, about 1% of your audience will ever give you a dollar. And that that is T-shirts, Patreon money, Advertise, you know, advertisements are a little bit different, but advertisement money is very hard to come by. You've got to have a long standing audience and numbers and influence in your space for that to really work, which equals time and consistency. Now, income can obviously be a metric of success. And you could say, you know, I'm going to put this, I'm going to put 10 hours a week into this and to get my money back to, in, in terms of time. I need to make X dollars an hour or this isn't worth it to me. And maybe that will help you motivate yourself. But I, I often find this is the poorest metric of success because it's very hard to convince an audience that a lot of times is small or doesn't exist to donate. You've got to give a lot of value to get value back. So make sure that uh, that you keep your metric of success in line and think about it, okay? You've got to think about what... If I'm investing this time and I'm investing my money, what will I feel uh, proud of getting back, uh, getting in return? Okay, if I'm giving value, what value do I get back, right? Um, you, it could be more esoteric like my goal where I, I like the deadline. <laughs> you know, I, I have missed my deadlines the last few weeks because of moving and getting COVID. Uh, and I feel bad about it and I don't like it and I want to get back to work and reading and researching because that deadline motivates me to grow personally in, in my intellectual space and keeping informed and communicating with my community. That is a metric of success. Am I producing or not? Am I creating or not? Am I, and, and, and I can't give you a, a, like an hour goal or a quantification. I just know when I'm being lazy or not or if I'm missing those marks or not. Uh, is it downloads? Is it 100 downloads in the first six months, 100 downloads in the first year? Okay, well, what do I got to do to market this podcast to get to that? You know, Or is it something even a little harder like the second income or something a little easier like building influence? Knowing what your metric of success is or what your goal is or what you personally want to get out of doing this podcast will influence how you do your content. So it's important to think about this before you start. 
So with that, I just want to thank you for listening to Podcasting and Platforms. Please make sure you go to podcastingandplatforms.com. If you got something out of this, I just ask that you share it. Please share it with a friend. Let them know if you're thinking about if they're thinking about starting a podcast, send them this podcast. And with that, we say thank you and we'll see you again next Wednesday.